Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to reverse sear a T-bone steak, and we're also gonna cook a small half lobster to go with it. So to get started, we're gonna set our barbecue up. All right, so we're gonna be using our kettle style barbecue today. So we'll open our lid and take our cooking grate off. Next, you wanna get some charcoal or briquettes going. So I'm just gonna lay down three fire lighters and light them up. Now, if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you getting one. This is a charcoal chimney. They come in a few different shapes and sizes but I'm gonna place that down on the top of our fire lighters and I'm just gonna fill that up about halfway with some briquettes. Now there's a heap of different ways you can go about doing the reverse sear method. You can follow along in your kettle style barbecue like we're using today, or you can pretty much set up the reverse sear method in any other style of barbecue, even your gas barbecue. You can also do it in your oven inside and finish your steak off in a pan later on. It's all about cooking your steak indirect and then finishing it off with a sear later on. I'll talk through the process a bit more in depth as we go along, but for now, we've got about 10 minutes before those briquettes are gonna be ready, so we'll use this time to prepare our steak. All right, so here we have our beautiful T-bone steak. And yes, in Australia, we call this a T-bone steak. I understand that in the US, they call this a porterhouse steak. And the T-bone is made up of two separate cuts. You've got the porterhouse or sirloin on this side, and then the eye fillet on this side. Now the sirloin is a much more dense piece of meat than the eye fillet, meaning the eye fillet is gonna cook faster. Not by much, but we do wanna keep that in mind for when we're cooking it later on, as we'll look to position the sirloin side towards the fire. So this one doesn't need much, but we're just gonna quickly trim it up. Just gonna trim a little bit of fat off that tail end. A little bit of fat on the inside of the eye fillet side. We'll flip it over. And that's looking pretty good, so we can season this up. Now, if you've got a favorite beef rub, go ahead and get that out, or salt and pepper will do the trick nicely, but we're gonna be using some of my beef bounce rub today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give our steak a nice, generous coating. We wanna make sure we hit all sides, just like so. We'll flip it over, and we'll do this other side. We'll do the fat on the outside. And now our steak is trimmed and seasoned. We'll come back once these briquettes are ready. All right, so our briquettes are pretty much ready. You want them to be red hot and ashed over. I'm gonna dump these in now and those few that aren't completely ashed over, we'll get the rest of the way whilst our barbecue is preheating. So you just wanna dump those in. I'm just gonna pile them up on the opposite side to where the lid vent is. And then we'll shut our lid and you wanna make sure your top and bottom vents are wide open. All right, it's been a few minutes. Our barbecue is nice and preheated. This is gonna be a hot and fast reverse sear, but if you wanted to do it low and slow for the first part, feel free to do that. Now I'm gonna chuck a nice little chunk of cherry wood straight on the fire. Then I'll lay a drip tray down underneath where our steak's gonna go. And I'll get this cooking grate on. Then our beautiful steak. And like I mentioned earlier, I've got this sirloin end facing towards the fire and that fat is gonna help protect that meat as well. Now I'm gonna shut the lid and we'll let this steak smoke away. All right, so our barbecue is sitting at around the 400 Fahrenheit or 200-ish degrees Celsius. And like I said, it's really up to you how you wanna go about this first part of the cook. You can go hot and fast or more low and slow towards that more 250 Fahrenheit or 120 Celsius range. The most important part is making sure you've got clean burning smoke and having that steak indirect. And it's always hard to put a time on these things, but that steak being around an inch and a half thick I reckon it's gonna take around 45 minutes to get to our target internal. I'm looking to serve this medium rare, so I'm gonna to look to take this steak off at around the 125 Fahrenheit or 52 degrees Celsius mark. And the reverse sear method is really only suitable for steaks an inch and over in thickness. Any steak under an inch in thickness, you're better off just direct grilling for the whole cook. So while our steak's cooking away, we're gonna make a quick garlic butter to go with our half lobster later on. All right, so real simple, into a little pot, I'm just gonna add 100 grams of butter. Well, what's that around? two and a half, three tablespoons worth. Then I'm just gonna finely chop and add around a big teaspoon worth of parsley. I'm just gonna peel and finely chop around four large cloves of garlic. Now with garlic, there really isn't any exact measurement. You just measure that with your heart. All right, and that can go in the fridge until we're ready to melt that down a bit later on. All right, and after about 35 minutes, let's check our steak. I reckon it should almost be done. That is pretty much there. Keep in mind this will carry over a few degrees during the rest. That is pretty much there. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm just gonna rest that on some butter wrapped up loosely in some foil. 
And while that's resting, we can cook this lobster. All right, I've got this beautiful little southern rock lobster. Super simple, I've just given the meat side a little brush in olive oil, dusted it in some garlic goals, and all I'm gonna do is put that meat side down over those briquettes. I'm gonna give that around 90 seconds to two minutes just until that meat gets some nice color. I'm also gonna get that garlic butter on as well just for that butter to melt down. All right, that's just about been two minutes. Let's have a look. Some beautiful color on there. So I'm just gonna flip it over. We'll keep it direct on those coals and I reckon that's gonna take another four to six minutes until that's done. If you wanna be sure, stick a thermometer around in there and you want all of that to be at around the 140 Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius internal mark. Make sure you don't let that overcook, otherwise it can go rubbery. But for now, we'll shut this lid for a few minutes and we'll come back to finish it off in the last couple of minutes with some of that garlic butter. All right, so our lobster is around two to three minutes away from being ready, I reckon. And as you can see, I've just positioned our lobster so the tail is at the cooler end of the pile of briquettes. Just because the meat down that end is a little bit thinner, so that's gonna cook quicker. So just to help it cook more evenly, you just wanna have this thicker part of the lobster over the hotter part of the coals. I'm just gonna give this garlic butter a good stir. And then we can start brushing some of that on. And I'll leave the lid open for these last few minutes and we'll come back to give this lobster one final baste once it's done. All right, and now we've hit temp in our lobster. We'll give it one last final baste and we'll move it in direct while we sear this steak. We'll give our grill a quick brush. And now we'll finish our steak off with a sear for about a minute per side. All right, that's been a bit over a minute, so we can flip it over. All right, now we can get it all out to slice and serve. All right, because our steak had a rest in between the smoke and the sear, it doesn't need another one. So we can cut this straight up. But if you chose to smoke your steak and then sear it straight away, you definitely want to give it a rest straight after. All right, so that fillet side cooked beautifully. And our porterhouse side cooked beautifully as well. All right, so there's nothing more to do now other than to get stuck into it. So we'll get some of this tail meat out. And have a look at that. That's beautiful. We'll have a bit of that with a bit of the steak and give that a try. It doesn't get much better than that. That's gonna be the ultimate surf and turf. So there you have it. How to reverse sear a T-bone steak and cook a half lobster. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let YouTube know by giving this video a like and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. And I wanna give a special shout out to all my YouTube members. I hope you enjoyed the early access to this video and all the other perks that you get. But for now, that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.